This um, is a clear-cut case of the abuse of the legal process. You have a corporation, which is effectively the Norwegian government, abusing the Canadian legal system uh, to stop global criticism about salmon farming. CERMAC is a subsidiary, um, sorry, Mainstream is a subsidiary of CERMAC. And CERMAC is owned, its largest shareholder is the Ministry of of trade and industry in Norway. So this is the Norwegian state. It's a state-owned Norwegian company that operates here in Canada and British Columbia. And it is. Uh, it also operates in Chile and Norway, but it is chosen as a venue to clamp down on criticism, the BC system. Uh, it's picked a regime here in British Columbia that upholds corporate reputation more than any other jurisdiction. This case, I don't think, would have even got this far in, in the United Kingdom or the United States. Here in Canada, believe it or not, free speech is, is not a right. Corporate reputation seems to have more right than freedom of speech. I am uh, defending the right to speak out against salmon farming. And sadly, the defense of free speech is not free. It costs a lot of money. Thankfully, uh, over $25,000 has, has been raised in the last three days. So I'm halfway to paying my lawyer's legal fees. Every day of trial is $3,000 in legal bills. And the trial is scheduled for 20 days until the 10th of February. So this is a costly defense, but I think this is all about freedom of speech and defending the right to criticize a corporation. And the British Columbian legal system has to balance the defense of free speech against the defense of corporate reputation. And we've seen under Harper that Canada is eroding environmental protection through uh, job cuts at Environment Canada, through uh, pulling out of the Kyoto Protocol, through the expansion of the tar sands and the Enbridge pipeline, and it is protecting corporations. So. I'm not sure how this is going to go, but I'm going to fight it all the way, and we'll see at the end of the day whether Canada upholds corporate reputation or freedom of speech. CERMAC is suing me for uh, mock cigarette packets that you can see here that say salmon farming kills, so I draw parallels between how the salmon industry, uh, big aquaculture, is behaving in a very similar way to big tobacco, how salmon farming is like smoking, and how the salmon farming industry, by denying sea life science, by de uh, denying the spread of infectious diseases like infectious salmon anemia, has behaved in the very similar way to the tobacco companies did in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And bizarrely, um, by launching this lawsuit, I think the company has proved my point. It's uh, I, the Latin expression QED. I think they've proved themselves to be acting in that way because this is what happened. This with this is what happened with big, big big tobacco is the launch of lawsuits and this denial of the science. There's a great book out there on the bookshelves called The Merchants of Doubt, and it's all about how the tobacco industry and the science around global warming, how corporate and government interests have massaged and smeared the science. And the salmon farming industry fits into the same bracket. They're merchants of doubt, but they're also merchants of death. They have uh, deaths of sea lions on their farms. They have deaths of workers. They spread diseases. So this is a global industry that has global interests, global impacts, but they're trying to focus it very much here in British Columbia and get an injunction against me. So the, the company wants an injunction. It wants $125,000 in damages. So it wants a financial uh, impact, but it also wants a gagging order. It wants an injunction. And now it looks as if the Canadian government wants to deport me to get me out of the country for speaking out uh, on a legitimate public interest. It's allowed Norwegian companies who now control 92% of the salmon farms here in British Columbia to hijack a public resource. It's allowed Atlantic salmon farms to come here into British Columbia and encroach and push out 
wild Pacific salmon. So this is a battle between the corporate interests and the public resource. So I think the people of British Columbia need to stand up and be counted. Do you want wild, healthy wild Pacific salmon, a native species that freely comes back to your doorstep, to your river where everybody has open access? Or do you want a privatized, disease-ridden Atlantic salmon farming industry controlled by a foreign company? So I think the choice is clear. If people have a free choice and know what's going on, they're gonna choose wild Pacific salmon above Norwegian Atlantic salmon farms. The Cohen Commission really opened the can of worms. It gave the public unfettered access to information. It forced the government to disclose disease information. So we saw for the first time about how the government has tried to bury the evidence about ISA, confiscate samples. We saw damning emails from Canadian Food Inspection Agency officials about winning the PR war. So we, 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 it, it opened the window of the world into what happens in Canada and how the government is protecting the salmon farming industry, which is mainly controlled in Norway uh, from public scrutiny. And this lawsuit is going to bring out some of this information and today uh, we already saw that uh, Cermak is trying to argue against the disclosure of information. So in court, my lawyer argued that Cermak had to disclose information and we spent about two hours with the judge and their lawyers arguing back and forth about whether this Norwegian company should disclose information on diseases, the killing of sea lions, uh, sea lice, the deaths of workers in Chile and around the world. And so I'm not trying to limit this to just mainstream Canada, just British Columbia, but we're trying to make it a global issue. I'm representing the Global Alliance Against Industrial Aquaculture. A lot of these cigarette packets are talking about global impacts. So they're trying to artificially narrow the lawsuit just to talk about British Columbia and their company, when in fact the cigarette packets don't name the company, they say Norwegian owned. So they've got to jump that hurdle before they even get down the road of proving their case and getting damages. This is all about subsidiaries and it's, it's a shell game. Mainstream Canada are at the bottom of the food chain and CERMAC is the big multinational that controls things. And Mainstream Canada are trying to say that they don't have access to the, the information records from other subsidiaries in Chile and Scotland and Norway. When in fact, it's one of the same. It's an intermesh company, CERMAC, Mainstream and EWOS, these three companies are effectively the same company. They're controlled in Oslo, in Norway, and that information is available at the click of a mouse. They report that information to the government authorities. We know that they report that through the website. So why can't they release that information? So this is a fight for freedom of speech. It's a fight for the right to information. And it's a fight uh, really to the death. You know, we need to stand up against these, these companies. I'm gonna fight them all the way. This is like a 15 round boxing fight and uh, it's not gonna be an early knockout. This is gonna go on and on and on. It may go through into February. And if you think about it, what, what mainstream have done by launching this lawsuit is they've effectively named themselves. They've shot themselves in the foot and the whole expression from uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet to hoist oneself up with your own petard is, is very relevant here. A petard is a bomb and they've ex effectively exploded a bomb in the face. They've dropped a bomb on their own head and they've forgotten the first rule of public relations which is when in a hole, stop digging. We know that there, there is an incestuous relationship on a trade level between Canada and Norway. We know that Norwegian companies are invested in the tar sands. Statoil, a, a, novel, a Norwegian state-owned company, has huge investments in the tar sands. Norway's richest man, John Fredriksen, owns BC's largest salmon farming company, Marine Harvest, the world's largest salmon farming company. He's an oil tanker magnet. He, he makes his money shipping oil and gas. So there's a clear vested business interest here for Norwegian companies operating salmon farms and pipelines and oil and all these polluting industries. 
to expand here in Canada and in British Columbia. So I think there's a there's a trade level here that is superseding environmental concerns. And I think salmon are an icon of British Columbia, and we need to stand up and fight for a wild salmon because if we don't. All you'll find is corporate controlled Atlantic salmon farms, oil and gas, and the Enbridge pipeline, the fight for Fish Lake against the Prosperity Mine, and copper mines want to expand in Clackwood Sound, for example, in the headwaters of the Fraser. These are all important battles, and 2012 could be a watershed in the fight for, for wilderness. British Columbia is the last frontier, and we need to defend that from these corporations coming in and using British Columbia as a corridor to export uh, products to China. Christy Clark was talking very recently and candidly, and she slipped up by saying that the coastline of British Columbia is not just for people in British Columbia, it's all Canadians, it's Albertans. And basically what she's saying is that BC is gonna be used as a conduit, as a kind of route through which to, to ship dirty oil from the tar sands to China, and it's also a venue for these Norwegian companies to spread infectious diseases and export farm salmon around the world. And I don't think people should stand for that. They should stand up and be counted. And it's amazing the flood of support that I've had in the last three days. We've raised over $25,000 for the lawsuit. It's coming in. I'm going to check uh, my Facebook and this funding website in a second, and it might be over 30,000. Such is the strength of public support. And $10,000 came from a Norwegian salmon fishing group. So even though we're campaigning against Norwegian companies, the people in Norway are supportive. People in Norway who care about the environment and wild salmon are ashamed of the actions of the Norwegian companies here in British Columbia. Such was the success of the Salmon Farming Kills campaign. These cigarette packets really hit the target. They hit the bullseye. Just like the salmon farming industry uses you know, bullets to shoot sea lions and seals, it, it was in the crosshair. So I think that they, uh, they launched this legal action um, because the campaign was so effective, but they've shot themselves in the foot. By launching this lawsuit, they're bringing attention to salmon farming. In the UK 25 years ago, McDonald's took a libel action against two activists for disseminating very similar information that I've disseminated. And uh, the court case took 10 years. There was books and documentaries called McLibel. And uh, eventually McDonald's won, but they had such bad PR and such bad media coverage that they cleaned up their act. And this really is McLibel with gills or McLibel with fins. It's a similar case and it's a similar uh, case to defend for free speech. And even if I lose, I, I don't really care. I obviously want to win, but they're not going to get $120,000 off me. They're not going to get an injunction. If they get an injunction here in British Columbia, I'll go to Norway. And it looks like they're going to deport me anyway. I'll go to Chile. I'll go to Scotland and I'll say exactly the same thing. They can't muzzle the truth. The truth will always win out in the end. I think it's a sure sign that the criticism that Gaia and other salmon farming activists are doing is, is really hurting the industry and it's it just shows how close the industry and the government are intertwined. We found out through the Cone Commission that effectively Keith Ashfield, the Minister of Fisheries, and Jerry Ritz, the Minister of Agriculture, instead of protecting wild fish and protecting food safety, they were promoting and protecting the Norwegian salmon farming industry. So, you know, here we have a similar situation, and I think it's time for the public to wake up and, and vote for those parties and those people that stand up for wild salmon, not our corporate shills and our promoting industries that, at the end of the day, jeopardize the whole integrity of British Columbia. Wild salmon, they fertilize the forests and they feed the eagles and the bears and First Nations and fishermen. And we need to protect that for the long term, not short term gains from Norwegian companies. How can people support you? What's the address to send money? Uh, um, the funding mechanism is gofundme.com and then gofundme.com Don Stanford and you can see me on Facebook and it should be on Twitter, but gofundme.com, Don Staniford is my name, and you should get to a page where you can donate through PayPal. There's also, you can send checks and donate 
directly online into my bank account and the website is wildsalmonfirst.org so we have the Earth First campaign and it's it's a very similar campaign instead of the fist we have a, a head of a sockeye and instead of the the tagline the Earth First is the first uses no compromise in the defense of Mother Earth the tagline for Wild Salmon First is no compromise in the defense of wild salmon. And this money is going to be used for? We're going to defend the lawsuit and defend um, wild salmon from the spread of infectious diseases from Norwegian companies. I think we need to get back to basics and put wild salmon first. Salmon can't speak for themselves. We need advocates like Alexandra Morton, like all the wild salmon warriors across British Columbia who are speaking out to defend wild Pacific salmon, especially from the spread of diseases from these Norwegian Atlantic salmon farms. Don, are, are, are the police coming to get you right now? Uh, when I came out of court at lunchtime, the police were waiting for me. The Canadian Border Services Agency, uh, they are threatening to deport me. Uh, and I'm going to have to get a second lawyer with a view to defending the right to stay here in Canada, the right to defend myself in the trial. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Canadian government, this is the Harper government that is effectively trying to get me out of the country uh, for speaking out against Samophony.